Alexander Okinio. I'm head of professional association of corporate governance. A lot can be said about the organization, uh, but uh, <clears throat> what is the most important uh, for you to know is um, the dates that you can see uh, behind my back. It's um, the next dates for our training, for our education program. Uh, uh, the events will be held online, so you are welcome to join. So that's the first thing I wanted to say. Um, secondly, during the difficult times uh, of the pandemic and uh, other things, uh, we're trying to be useful and helpful for you uh, in terms of information. So we're holding now the third already event of this kind conference. Uh, uh, and today uh, we're going to discuss um, the subject uh, that uh, I'm sure will be interesting for everyone. That's compensation for um, directors in uh, both public and private companies um, during the pandemic and after the pandemic, what uh, should change, what uh, has to be changed. And um, I'm happy now to introduce our participants and panelists. Um, Jason Brad Palmer, original head of IFC in uh, um, Ukraine, Belarus, and Moldova. <clears throat> well, I think um, everyone knows this abbreviation and um, is uh, at the same time head of the nomination committee for our. <clears throat> most important um, SOEs in Ukraine. And secondly, uh, I'm pleased to introduce Shelki Arjuna, who has worked for many years uh, um, in the EBRD in Ukraine, as head of EBRD in Ukraine, and now he's uh, chairman of um, UZ and Nuclear Energo Board. I guess uh, uh, Shelki's experience uh, <clears throat> allows him to discuss both the uh, Ukraine and international trends. Andrei Boitsun, um, on the one hand, he represents the uh, academia, so to say, scientific wing, and on the other hand, he <coughs> is a member of Ukrainathos uh, board and um, Prior to that, he had been for a long time part of uh, Saxor um, group of advisors uh, assisting the government of Ukraine. So I believe um, it's an expert view uh, will be interesting for you. Yuri Vitrenko is, uh, <coughs> until recently, he was chairman of uh, NAFTA's board and he He's been on the boards of Ukrgas, Dubuanya, UGV, Ukroboron Prom. I guess um, Yuri doesn't need a lot of introduction. He is a practitioner and um, will be trying to tap to his uh, practical experience today. Max Fyodor, who <coughs> was known for four years as first deputy minister of economy. Uh, uh, and uh, I believe <laughs> actually as one of the persons who were involved in the development and in the introduction of all those con concepts of supervisory boards and compensation etc. I'm very glad to see you and to hear you and um, thank you dear colleagues for joining us today. Uh, and just one more minute uh, on how the event was uh, organized, uh, some behind the scene information. Well, this is, of course, we know a controversial issue, at least two views 
or two schools on how to treat this subject and we wanted to bring representatives of those two camps together for this discussion but uh, uh, but uh, representatives of one of the schools or of the other school uh, were not able to join unfortunately so i'll uh, i'll just um, fulfill this role and uh, voice this stereotype and uh, stereotypes uh, for you to <coughs> uh, refute if possible and uh, in terms of household things uh, again we'll, we are recording the event and uh, will um, share the, uh, the the information the material <coughs> to those interested uh, the points of our today's discussion to all interested parties so they can uh, get some benefits some 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 use um, so let's uh, let's move and uh, the first uh, point uh, that uh, we actually hear a lot uh, unfortunately not only from journalists but uh, also from government officials etc uh, and the point is that uh, the compensation for directors and members of supervisory boards uh, <coughs> is uh, humongous uh, in Ukraine and uh, out of uh, any common sense uh, limits uh, and uh, in connection with this my question is what can we say about this statement and uh, and um, secondly if, if there is any idea of what is a normal compensation for a director in, in Ukraine or, or not in Ukraine. For example, 100 units in, of something is uh, normal and 500 units is uh, too much. Uh, so could you give us an idea, some, some, some rule of thumb or some, some benchmark? So let's start with this. Thanks, so Alexander. I'm, I'm happy to, to take the, the lead from, from my perspective. And maybe just before opening up, uh, it's great to be part of, of this panel to work with you again, Alexander, in the context of, of PACO uh, and to be among uh, corporate governance uh, fellow reformers. I think, as you, you rightly mentioned, I, you, you have a panel of people who have been very uh, influential uh in various capacities of, of pushing forward the corporate governance reform uh one of the the key topics uh is indeed uh remuneration now that's been one of one of the issues that have been used uh by those who are opposed to corporate governance reform uh to uh to push back on some of the achievements that, that have already been made uh remuneration uh why is it such a hot topic uh, it, because uh, it comes down to the fundamentals of, of your question is, is what is fair compensation? Fair compensation is not abstract. It, it's based on market principles. It's what it takes to attract the right talent uh, into that position and not only to attract, but to retain. Uh, and there are different ways of, of benching, benchmarking that, but there are, there are generally accepted principles for establishing uh, the right remuneration for supervisory board matter, uh, uh, members. Uh, and those principles uh, are, are the same uh, for management. Uh, when you're trying uh, to attract a, a CEO, a CFO, uh, a, an IT specialist to your company, uh, you would go through the very same exercise uh, when trying to attract independent supervisory board members to your public or, or private company. The, uh, if I may uh, jump in, and, and I fully agree with you, Jason, that uh, 
while it is topical, uh, the way in which uh, the compensation for such positions in Ukraine has to be uh, determined must reflect a couple of things. First, the as you said, the market uh, attraction element, i.e. the opportunity cost for the person who's taking that position compared to where and what he could earn elsewhere uh, that he would otherwise miss by being a member of a particular board. Uh, secondly uh, is the uh, risk premium. Uh, we have to also agree, uh, accept freely that there is a number of risks involved in being on Ukrainian state-owned enterprise boards, financial risk, uh, physical risk even, sadly, but truly, and reputational risk uh, because of what is happening in a number of these organizations that uh, supervisory boards cannot necessarily control. So when you, when you add this uh, opportunity cost and risk premium, uh, to me, uh, what is on the table for quite a number of these institutions does not seem out of uh, the uh, reasonableness uh, sort of parameter, if you like. You can, you know, adjust here and there some slight margins, uh, perhaps because of the broader economic uh, conjuncture change, but the fundamental parameters don't really, uh, has not changed. Uh, I would like also to step in, but I would like first to ask uh, if I should speak uh, Ukrainian or English. Can you hear me? So most of the audience is Ukrainian speaking. Okay, then uh, for the audience, um, using Ukrainian. I agree with Jason, I agree with Shevki or with what they just said, but as a practitioner, as I was introduced, and um, yes, I, was, I wasn't I was head of uh, Ukrainafta, I wasn't CEO of uh, Ukrainafta, I was chairman of the board, so I wasn't in the management, but just to correct you. Uh, well, in terms of common sense, uh, view uh, <clears throat> you have to commensurate the uh, compensation for the supervisory boards uh, with the quality and uh, with the performance of um, his or her work and um, then uh, also with the uh, function of the supervisory board <clears throat> So if a uh, supervisory board is overseeing a uh, CEO who is uh, making, whose market uh, value is like five or ten thousand uh, dollars a month, uh, I guess uh, everyone would agree that uh, it doesn't make sense for the supervisory board members to get hundreds of thousands. So. Uh, a supervisory board member should not earn, uh, in terms of the hourly rate, more than the CEO. Uh, so, the problem in Ukraine is that uh, a lot of uh, SOEs, if we are to speak about SOEs, are managed by people whose markets uh, value market worth is five to ten thousand dollars a month and so uh, there the oversight is uh, done by people who are making two hundred thousand dollars <throat> or twenty thousand uh, and uh, in terms of the uh, functions uh, uh, it's a uh, often rubber stamping, uh, if it's rubber stamping, or if it's some uh, <coughs> interactions with the government, uh, uh, which is different from the proper uh, job of uh, a supervisory board director, then yes, they are overpaid. <coughs> 
uh, uh, sometimes supervisory board members are fulfilling the role of a uh, screen, if you will. <laughs> in in some companies, for example, in Privat Bank, um, supervisory board members are not just rubber stampers and um, <clears throat> Of course, uh, their remuneration, their compensation can be higher than the, in the range of tens of thousand dollars. So, then that would be fair. Thank you, Yuri. Is my understanding correct that there should be difference between the approach to compensation in public and private sectors? No, it, the, <clears throat> it should depend on uh, who is. Uh, in charge of the company and uh, based on what principles the company is being managed. Um, so if the supervisory board uh, went for some political compromise and some, they were not able to appoint uh, a uh, real CEO, a proper one, uh, and they said that hey, let's Let's keep the CEO, the current CEO, whose market's uh, <coughs> value valuation is like five to ten thousand dollars a month, like I said. Uh, then those, the, the members of such supervisory board uh, uh, should be getting a lower compensation than those in, for example, private where things really work. Thank you. <coughs> uh, um, so in terms of uh, Shelke, for example, <coughs> in terms of what Shelke said, uh, what should be the proportion uh, or uh, compensation for supervisory board members in Ukraine and uh, in Europe, in the West, uh, should they get more or less? Andy? <clears throat> oh, it's great that uh, we're holding such events to discuss such uh, things. I think uh, it is exactly the role of such professional associations to actually shape discussions in the in the proper frame, in the proper form. So I think it's <laughs> it would be incorrect to. Com compare you know, Ukraine with other Tanzania or other countries. <clears throat> and uh, we're in transition from socialist economy to market economy. So market-wise, there is a market for such people. <clears throat> uh, like uh, there is a market for cars, for coffee, for uh, football players. Uh, uh, and it would be weird uh, if a uh, football player making X money in one country is invited to Ukraine, uh, is offered some you know lower salary because we are saying that we cannot afford paying more. Uh, well, he would of course say something like, "Thank you, I'll call you back at some point, maybe." <laughs> uh, so um, I and my colleague Mitro Yablonovsky, uh, we wrote an article for Nova Vreme, and the idea is that uh, <clears throat> there should be indeed some 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 adjustments, uh, uh, and uh, yes, we have to be able to uh, invite to bring. Uh, foreigners in Ukraine, not because of their uh, Dutch or other citizenship, but because there's lack of people with proper reputation in Ukraine, and that's that's the role for Baku, for the association, and other association, and um, <coughs> and um, to bring them in Ukraine, we have to offer them proper proper terms. And there is 
toxicity associated with uh, uh, working here and uh, so uh, I believe that uh, in, in this case we have to think about some sort of adjustment taking what I said into account to actually get some interest from such people. I'm sure that people working on towards Deutsche Bahn would not be <laughs> not agree to uh, come to use that board uh, uh, on the current terms. <laughs> and um, uh, coming back on what Yuri said, uh, uh, the second point, the second factor is uh, the actual job of uh, supervisory board the <clears throat> what they are actually doing if they are spending more time on the on the on the function on the job then it should be remunerated properly and then uh, <clears throat> i think today best paid um, supervisory reports in ukraine cpet and naftagas i guess um, prior to the lockdown they uh, were offering indeed level of compensation that could attract um, like uh, well, uh, at the same time Ukraine Posta 70,000 people employed um, but uh, low asset value and um, then resolution 668 and Max knows it well uh, <clears throat> and because because of that, uh, they're getting one fifth of uh, of uh, of that uh, previous level that I mentioned. Even though the the workload is uh, you know, not more. <clears throat> uh, so to attract the talents that Jason mentioned. So, uh, it, it, it is important to, if you want to bring talents, it is important to have a proper budget for that. Because if you if you have, for example, fifty thousand dollars and uh, and you if you want to buy a Mercedes and, and someone is uh, comes and uh, says that we don't have a Mercedes, but we we have a Lada, uh, and uh, <clears throat> we can sell it for 45,000, take it. Uh, so my point is that uh, having a budget for, for that is, is one thing, and um, but it's also important to be able to bring proper people uh, on this budget. Thank you, Andre, and thank you for actually <coughs> um, throwing a bridge to, to the contribution of Max Nifedo, you mentioned, and, <coughs> um, so we've uh, discussed this uh, a bit without uh, uh, any precise figures, uh, but the state of Ukraine, uh, cabinet of ministers, <coughs> uh, actually uh, went ahead and uh, came up with precise figures, specific figures. I understand it was difficult, so. Uh, but uh, uh, what was the approach? Thank, uh, uh, my colleagues, and uh, I'll comment first on the on the size of the salaries. But uh, there are two parts of this uh, discussion. One is the the more philosophical, intellectual part: how to determine the compensation for board directors. 
um, it's difficult because there is no um, market, proper markets or usual market in Ukraine uh, for board directors, uh, different companies, different boards and different uh, uh, functions. I mean, how much should uh, Dami Ahmetov make uh, in MetInvest? That's difficult thing to ask. <laughs> and uh, how much uh, should uh, directors get uh, in private companies where the owner brings his friends and uh, they discuss things in restaurants uh, that's that's a totally different case uh, so it's hard to uh, talk about uh, any any kind of rule of some because it depends on the company, on the workload, on, <clears throat> on the contribution. So I think uh, should be decided case by case basis with the recruitment companies, um, with the specific candidates, uh, uh, what the compensation should be. Uh, <clears throat> including money and non-money things and uh, uh, in terms of uh, bringing talents to Ukrainian supervisory boards uh, uh, well in SOE's uh, supervisory boards are spending 99% of their time on protecting the companies from the shareholder uh, of course, one could say that there are some other things that they're doing, but uh, in fact, 99% uh, of uh, cases or situations, what these people are <coughs> getting paid for is for saying no. So it's, it's hard to kind of see what, what, what is proper, what is normal. Um, and the shareholder is kind of this contradiction on the one hand, the shareholder wants the companies to develop on the other hand, um, creating obstacles. Uh, so it's, it's difficult, you know, uh, checks are fine, but um, hard to talk about some tangible, you know, scopes of work and uh, the word fair level uh, was uh, used the word fair but that's uh, what is fair that's a um, metaphysical uh, category uh, and uh, there is a uh, wide range of compensations uh, in Ukraine, and so there is no benchmark. Yuri mentioned five thousand dollars as the as the minimum level, but uh, you know, even that amount uh, is uh, much more than what uh, an average Ukrainian believes to be fair salary for public official. Uh, Especially if they think about, you know, if they think that that official is not actually doing things, but overseeing something. So uh, if we uh, discuss this from the viewpoint of what's fair, I don't think we would be able to get anywhere because uh, if we think uh, about how much Ahmeto is paying, how much Pinchuk is paying, or Antoshka, or, or Vodafone, that's, uh, there's, there's no point. Uh, from a practical viewpoint, etc. Uh, well, Jason was introduced as head of non and um, I was, deputy for a couple of years 
honorary functions. So uh, I, based on my experience, which was sometimes positive, sometimes not very positive. Uh, so I guess that uh, the non-com should uh, approach this uh, on a case by case basis. and um, might be politically easier in this situation because we understand that uh, there are so, so some political appointees and we all know that so. and, uh, there are certain quotas and that's good for diversification uh, <laughs> Um, so in some cases, yes, we can speak about uh, what's the person market value and then, uh, you know, <clears throat> air tickets, uh, other costs, uh, that's clear. In some other cases, uh, it's uh, people who cannot be valued from that point of view and perhaps that that's the biggest salary they ever had <clears throat> and in terms of uh, the policy and um, I was responsible for making that policy when I was in the Ministry of Economy and uh, there was a struggle a fight on um, what the level should be and then of course people who had never seen uh, 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 salaries were talking about uh, and um, they were actually yelling that let's let's have a cup of like 20,000 grivnos <coughs> and then we were thinking about uh, dividing companies into less profitable, more profitable, loss making, uh, uh, other parameters, details. Uh, but then in terms of the range that uh, we established uh, um, well later on uh, it became clear that some of the in some cases it was uh, not very correct but we had to start with uh, something and then through iterations to get closer to the proper one <laughs> So, um, for example, over time, if the state believes that uh, uh, there is uh, more interest, uh, there is market, there is competition for such positions in some companies, then the salary can be lowered to a more competitive level. But then there are companies where no one wants to go. Now, on uh, the difference between <coughs> different entities, uh, 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 well, that's uh, sometimes that's uh, that's that's bizarre. That's weird between difference between management and uh, supervisory boards. Because if we want to ensure effective uh, performance uh, then uh, the compensation should be commensurate at the level of the board at the level of the management and then uh, minus one level <laughs> and um, situations when uh, management or CEOs are making really you know not much and then supervisory board members are 
making a lot that's uh, not to uh, I believe thank you I guess it's time now to voice that other point that uh, we hear very often so uh, After saying that uh, uh, the directors are getting a lot of money, <coughs> uh, they normally go on and uh, say that uh, the companies uh, do not perform well. And uh, then the logic is uh, let's somehow <coughs> link the compensation to the performance or of the company or some KPIs. And my question is, uh, is it appropriate at all to discuss KPIs for board directors? And uh, if, 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 if yes, uh, if you believe that that's, that's a proper thing to do, then how to do it? Uh, uh, that's a question for everyone. Uh, Andrei? Um, now, um, as regards the first part of the question, the KPIs, so that's a, that's a buzzword already and not everyone understands clearly what it means. So, uh, for sure, we have to evaluate uh, the performance of uh, directors, uh, but when we Speak about KPIs normally that applies to management and uh, a, a, a group of people responsible for different functions and then uh, KPIs really help to evaluate their personal uh, contributions uh, and that's the concept of personal accountability. And that can be judged on the ultimate outcome, i.e. the implementation of the, of the strategy. <laughs> and uh, then uh, in terms of the fixed variable part, uh, uh, well, some, in some cases when the stock market is developed, then the variable part can be linked to share price or uh, but not in our case yet uh, but then again the general point is that KPIs are linked to individual contributions whereas uh, supervisory board is a collective or collegiate body <laughs> And uh, there are no such individual roles, you know. It's not like, you know, one director is responsible for marketing and uh, the other one is responsible for sales or something else. So it's much more difficult to <coughs> evaluate, to assess the individual contribution. And then the second question is, who's gonna do that? Uh, because uh, there's a risk that uh, by uh, going down this route, we would create, we have to create a, a uh, another body on top of the supervisory board to oversee it. Uh, and uh, the function of a supervisory board is largely to exercise. Uh, To, 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 to control what is being done. So, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, if we talk about auditors, uh, and if we talk about the variable part, so the more errors they can find, then the more they will be paid. Uh, so if we if we actually 
do that, then the supervisory board's function would be distorted. They would just go and, um, you know, take risks together with management and do other things. So my position is that compensation for board directors should be fixed. Um, unlike the compensation for the management executive, because there's a totally different philosophy. Uh, but <clears throat> there should be evaluation for supervisory boards uh, external, done externally. <clears throat> and uh, the main the, the, the main area or, or the main thing by which uh, supervisory perfor board performance can be judged is the, is the strategy and how the strategy is implemented and whether the company is uh, achieving results or not. And if not, then there will be questions to the supervisory board whether they've really done anything to achieve the result. Uh, there is an attempt now in the government to set some KPIs for SOE boards. Uh, well, I think it's wrong because uh, the government approves the, adopts the ownership policy and approves the strategy. And by approving the strategy, it uh, sets the target so everyone knows what the targets are and if we add specific kpis to then we add the if i may <laughs> briefly uh, uh, well of course that that's the classic discussion in kpis and okr and so in terms of whether it's possible or, or reasonable to do that in Ukraine, I think uh, not because there is no policy or there is no framework to assess the state of affairs in each given companies. Uh, and uh, <coughs> uh, what the directors are doing and whether they're doing it right. And, and secondly, as I said, uh, the main function of um, SOE boards is they know to the shareholder learns how to assess this function and performance. Uh, uh, and um, given that uh, we're going through uh, a period of uh, not very stable and uh, especially now and uh, we hardly remember the names of our recent ministers and, uh, you know, if a government uh, whose lifetime is one year starts writing, you know, 10 or 20 years strategy, then that's just, <coughs> that's a uh, tragedy slash comedy at the same time. <coughs> So, uh, it's hard to assess, for example, uh, how the supervisory board is, uh, you know, is influencing the company's performance uh, if they... <coughs> and um, if it takes, like, you can only see it up to three or five years and even in Ukrposhta, I believe they're doing a great job, but uh, still a few years uh, uh, from now, the, the people still be complaining that there will be queues and, uh, <coughs> and uh, saying that uh, strategic targets are not being achieved and that's not comparable to DHL, TNT. <laughs> so, um, in my opinion, in the, the Ukrainian reality, establishing KPIs and uh, uh, you know, variable part in uh, 
board directors compensation would be uh, improper would not be reasonable and uh, in terms of uh, evaluation perhaps uh, people experts OECD experts or, or some auditors could be uh, in, in involved uh, 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 for special authorities or is there a political pressure possible Shavki then Yuri um, thank you Yuri for ceding your place to me uh, just very briefly, uh, I think by nature of the job, uh, many of the evaluation parameters for supervisory board members will have to be subjective. Uh, these are uh, non-executive roles in, in, in their essence, even though there's quite a bit of uh, you know, transgression in the Ukrainian reality. So therefore, you are uh, leaving it vulnerable to then uh, political influencing if the uh, assessment of the person and therefore its compensation is then linked each year to which way the, uh, the politicians would want to use that subjective uh, element of uh, judgment. Uh, so therefore, I also sharing all the other views uh, that have been expressed, I think, uh, while the evaluation on a collective basis is, is important in order to uh, give uh, corrective guidance to the supervisory board in the way they perform, uh, the setting of KPIs and linking of compensation would be extremely dangerous path. Uh, okay, uh, if you allow me, I would like to talk about this topic from a practical point of view. From a practical point of view. Well, if I may, I would like to also speak on the subject from a practical viewpoint. Uh, <clears throat> from a practical viewpoint, it's clear that uh, compensation should be linked to the actual work done. Otherwise, it's not salary, it's not compensation, something else. How to assess the results? Well, perhaps there are some complex systems that doesn't work uh, in Ukraine. I'll explain why later on. But there are, at the same time, very simple performance criteria uh, supervisory boards. Naftogaz and Yuza were mentioned as the supervisory boards with highest compensation levels. Andre Boitsun, our from his academic point of view, said that uh, the main function of the supervisory board is uh, to keep management accountable. And, um, and that's accounts, that's financial statements. Uh, <coughs> Naftagas, for example, uh, contrary to the law on joint stock companies, has not provided financial statements for the last six months. So if the supervisory board in Naftogaz is not able, if they are not able to ensure that this fundamental thing is done, financial statements are filed, then what are they getting the compensation for? <laughs> uh, so in terms of market value, for example, Kobolev's market value is like ten thousand dollars if he goes to some other company. Uh, Mr. Kravitz uh, from the company where Shelke is the chairman, his market value, I, I might be wrong, you know, uh, this is five thousand dollars a month. <clears throat> so uh, if a uh, uh, member uh, of a supervisory board uh, is working, you know, if, if you are a member of a supervisory board, of this supervisory board, in a company where the chairman of the management board's market value is $5,000 a month, then <coughs> the compensation should be commensurate. Uh, 
So, uh, given that the workload is, is much less than it should be like $500 in Naftogaz, maybe $1,000. And uh, if there are no financial statements filed, then even that $1,000 should not be paid. Well, it may sound provocative, but I want to be, you know, straight to the point because uh, all, all these conversations and discussions in our context uh, are it's just not reasonable because uh, in, in many in many companies uh, supervisory boards are fulfilling the role of a, uh, of a protective of, of a you know <coughs> fake appearance or or screen uh, 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 the proper approach would be to have a uh, centralized ownership entity, but our politicians are against this. And there should be professionals who would be able to assess the performance of uh, supervisory boards in state-owned companies. And in such cases, uh, as a uh, Naftogaz with its uh, financial statements, uh, they they would be asking questions. Where are your financial statements? And uh, in the situation when uh, Kravitz was, uh, you know, uh, contract was extended to UZ, he was kept in UZ. They would be asking gently, why, why, where did you keep him? <laughs> But uh, there are people everywhere in the in the government, in the public service, uh, who do not have an idea of corporate governance of the of the procedures. So they're just one, not able one to thing. One thing, if I may, uh, thank you. Try to emphasize here. Uh, in the case of uh, many of these companies, they are so unique in their position that even uh, determination of the market value, let alone the risk uh, premium, is extremely difficult. For example, if you're giving Yuri the example of Ukrasalistitia, a person uh, who is heading that corporation might very well be only worth uh, $10,000, $15,000 in another company, but you would not find anybody to do that uh, UZ job for ten, fifteen thousand dollars because the risks and complexities and all these other elements of the hardship of the job is so much different and unique to that institution. So it's it's really uh, you know it's an element of seeing what the the best candidates are prepared to uh, take that position at what value is the uh, the key determinant and then you have to use your judgment and, and justification around that but even that you know objective assessment is is a very difficult challenge because of the nature of things and alexander if i may come in, come in here so i think yuri was indeed provocative and, and i appreciate that um and i think it, coming back to your earlier question on on kpis should there be kpis at the supervisory board level you've heard a number of, of opinions already on the subject my view is that, uh, and I think the the consensus position would be that certainly KPIs should not be at the performance level, financial indicators. That's not the, the job of, of a supervisory board. But there needs to be some sort of evaluation mechanism. Uh, and this links back to remuneration. How do we justify paying supervisory board members what's deemed to be uh, high salary? Uh, and we often hear in, in, in private companies, in public companies, uh, the value premium associated with good corporate governance. And, and the same rules should apply uh, in the Ukrainian context. And it would be good to get the data uh, to assess uh, how a company with a, a proper functioning independent supervisory board, like an Ukraposta and an Ukrazeliznice, is doing as compared to an SOE that doesn't have an independent supervisory board. And I, I think uh, what we would expect to see uh, is that financial performance, the ability to attract uh, commercial debt, not, not from a state-owned bank, 
but to attract commercial debt uh, would, would be much more favorable uh, to those companies that do indeed have an independent supervisory board. And then you could go further and benchmark uh, the, the, uh, what, what would actually be relatively small, the amount of, of, of uh, payments that a state-owned enterprise would be paying out, not out of government budget, but that state-owned enterprises are paying uh, to the supervisory board is a fraction uh, of the actual increase in profit due to the fact that the, the companies uh, are attracting debt at more attractive terms and their valuation is correspondingly higher. Я можу дуже швидко прокоментувати Джейсона. Well, I, I could uh, comment uh, very briefly on what James, Jason said. Uh, as uh, an invest banker in the past, I worked in uh, Merrill Lynch in London, other banks, and uh, we were working with large loans. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, in terms of debt raising, uh, we have no examples uh, of our SOEs raising that uh, on, on, on really market terms. Uh, and even the bonds that were issued by UZ and other companies, they were quasi-sovereign. And uh, the investors who were buying the bonds were buying them not because they believed uh, in the company's performance, but because they knew that um, if the company is uh, unable to service, and uh, <clears throat> then the government would step in. So uh, I agree that uh, in an ideal world, we could be looking at some, you know, cost decreases or value increases, etc. But unfortunately, the people who are now in charge of the issues, uh, they are just unable to do it because they do not understand anything. And uh, if we, again, create a centralized or decentralized ownership entity with professionals, then at some point they would be able to start doing it. Thank you, Yuri. Uh, To sum it up, uh, uh, we do not believe or you do not believe that uh, uh, in general there should be a variable part of the compensation. <laughs> but uh, still other in examples, maybe not in Ukraine, where there is uh, some linkage to the company's performance <clears throat> between compensation and performance and let me give examples uh, well i worked uh, in a uh, private equity funds and in the world of private equity uh, it is very common to to have uh, or, or, or to insist on uh, supervisory boards being there, board of directors. And uh, so it can be linked to the profit or to carrying interest at the time of exit. So, so there can be some, some, some part of compensation for supervisory board members linked to that. But then uh, the approach to selection of such directors is different because their, their functions are different. It's not only to <coughs> oversee what the management is doing, but it's also, you know, business building and uh, some relations, some representation function. Uh, 
but it's a normal situation when a board director helps uh, the company make money and in such cases uh, it is okay to have a variable components but in the case of ukraine that uh, would uh, end up you know uh, with conflicts of interest and corruption and extreme corruption in ukrainian reality and even even worse you know there is a saying that uh, if you ask a fool to pray he would end up you know breaking his forehead <coughs> so in the ukrainian reality you can uh, you know paint any figures you want in the financial and statements I'm, so I'm pretty board sure that that's if i may uh, come in here that uh, in uh, pretty much no country the capital markets regulations will allow a variable element uh, of uh, supervisory board of directors compensation simply because that would create a conflict of interest as Andre uh, in his uh, introductory commentary has has made um, so that i think in terms it's a completely different practice of course in the case of private equity as yuri mentioned but for public enterprises, uh, I think that's out of the question. Um, still another important difference is, and um, I'd not mean to turn this conversation into a, 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 a different route. Uh, the difference between board of directors and supervisory board but that's the difference between one tier and two tier uh, systems uh, but uh, since we're discussing the ukrainian situation i think um, where i and you are on the same page that it should be fixed uh, without variable because of the reasons that yuri shelke and i mentioned So there is a question from the audience and the audience is asking uh, is there any problem opening the uh, information about the making the compensation levels public <clears throat> uh, well the requirement to disclose the compensation is uh, uh, there for public companies only other companies uh, can do this but they are not uh, required to do this some some salaries uh, we see in the press and sometimes not is this normal or not what is the uh, just to clarify the question what is the problem well people are asking is 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 this a problem to make this information public or is it is it common practice uh, i personally believe that uh, it should be disclosed and when the e declarations were introduced for uh, supervisory board members uh, because they were <clears throat> affected uh, relatively accidentally by the anti-corruption law but uh, still i believe that uh, um, the compensation for board directors should be public and uh, soes are public the most public entities <clears throat> out there from a conceptual point of view because uh, they are owned by the people ultimately and people uh, <clears throat> should know what uh, salary is <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> the initial resolution that uh, Max mentioned <clears throat> was uh, 
better in this sense because there were precise figures, there was a table uh, everyone could refer to. And uh, in the current version, it is said that depending on the company's income, the average uh, salary is multiplied by a ratio. <coughs> Um, so, it is impossible to get an idea of uh, what a board member is making in Boris Pilar, for example. Uh, so, you have to calculate the average quarterly salary and then the ratio, then do other math. Uh, well, I was preparing the corporate governance report for NAFTA gas in 2014-2015 and um, I made that point in the report that everyone should know it should be disclosed. Thank you. So perhaps <coughs> let's um, move on to the next statement uh, of uh, our imaginary opponents. So what those people are saying is that uh, uh, they are setting the compensation levels uh, themselves uh, because the system is developed uh, and uh, introduced by the uh, remuneration committee. Uh, so, and that's that's not normal. So, the supervisory board members' uh, salaries are uh, set by the remuneration committee, which is part of the board. And uh, on the one hand, it's kind of normal practice in the states and everywhere. And um, but still, you know, people are saying that Jason and others. What do you think? Yeah. Is it let okay? me let me let me let me come into that. I think. Uh, in well-established uh, governance uh, markets, uh, that issue uh, is quite fine for the remuneration committee to set it itself. Uh, and it's still subject, of course, to ultimately to the shareholder approval at the AGM. Uh, but there are good benchmarks and, and et cetera about it. Uh, in the in the case of uh, Ukrainian context, you would not be able to. First of all, uh, so far, as far as I know, no uh, remuneration committee has set its own uh, remuneration. Uh, it's not yet on the cards, and uh, given again the political environment, it shouldn't be. It should be determined by a a committee of uh, independent professionals. The shareholder who is representing the 40 plus million uh, Ukrainians uh, as the ultimate owner of this. And of course, the uh, supervisory board remuneration committee uh, or, or the delegated committee to come to uh, a balanced, reasonable uh, level that would be serving the meeting of all these different objectives that we previously talked about. If, in my, my view, if only the remuneration committee of the institution at this stage of our corporate governance transformation is to set its own compensation parameters, that would be very wrong. Uh, that would leave the whole process to all sorts of criticism, self-serving accusations, and, and perhaps maybe in, in reality to self-serving uh, practices. It should be a, a process very well balanced by input from these three different uh, at least components. You might even want to bring in an IFI representative as you did for the selection process so that there's an element of balance in the, in the, uh, the entire process itself. Well, Alexander, I, I think Shevki was right to distinguish practices for private and, and public in, in this example. Uh, and, and the reason why it works in the private sector uh, where you have a remuneration committee uh, setting salaries is because of accountability, transparency, and the fact that the shareholder is, is ultimately accountable. 
Now, if we extend that to the, the state-owned enterprises in Ukraine, I think Shevki is, is, is also right uh, in establishing that given that this is such a, a difficult political issue, uh, it's better not to put the onus uh, on the remuneration committee of, of a state-owned enterprise, but should be something that's settled at, at a, a, a supra body, uh, maybe uh, not even necessarily the, the shareholder, but, but at the, the cabinet level. Um, in terms of figuring out what, what the uh, right levels are for uh, the different state-owned enterprises. If you allow me, Alexander, from a practical point of view, I would like to give a practical point of view. I would like to give a practical Well, if I may, again, as, uh, since I was introduced as a practitioner, I'm going to present my practitioner's viewpoints of, from my practitioner's viewpoint and based on my personal experience. Uh, to find the right person and to understand how much they should be paid and what the compensation structure should be, it's a, it's a it work, the job in itself. So, uh, the remuneration committee can be helpful and uh, it can uh, <clears throat> have its own position on this, uh, even in in Ukrainian reality and uh, you know it's a normal practice to discuss with the employee his or her salary and uh, I've done this myself with my subordinates uh, but uh, it's, a, it's a job for professionals so um, I uh, again I support and uh, advocate this uh, idea of uh, having this centralized ownership entity with the uh, asset management professionals uh, and, and also given the complexity of this market so uh, what Max Nefedov said that there are no benchmarks there there's no proper markets so the need for such professionals is uh, even more than uh, in any developed market because that's a job in itself and uh, it is my conviction that uh, the government should not be doing it because uh, they have no capacity they have no education no knowledge for that thank you yuri um, maxim two, two two things uh, i would like to turn to you with the uh, what um, I heard from Yuri and from others. Well, it was said in particular that uh, salary is uh, the subject to passion. You have to discuss it with the employee. And, uh, <coughs> and that uh, the remuneration committee could be useful, you know, to provide recommendations to the government, to the shareholder, because that's 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 a, that's a job and uh, secondly in, well in my view uh, discussing the actual salary with the candidates uh, um, sometimes does not happen um, or sometimes uh, it does, it happens, but only after the decision is made, so it's not transparent. So is this something that should be changed? <laughs> well, thank you for the question and I uh, absolutely support you. Because the question is not how to do it, the question is who, who's, who's going to do it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so at least that requires having some experience of, you know, employing people and, uh, you know, doing job interviews. But if it's professional politicians, so uh, this uh, <coughs> inherent conflict of interest, uh, uh, because uh, in the Ukrainian reality, when you're hiring a uh, board director, you're hiring a person that would be, you know, hitting your hands and saying no and preventing you from doing things. Uh, 
But then, uh, if we have a minister that uh, was appointed from six months ago and uh, with bright political ideas, uh, uh, well, just to imagine that he would be having interviews with the supervisory boards of Ukaraksim, uh, Yuzat, uh, etc. It's hard to imagine because uh, uh, this person should first be able to understand uh, what the supervisory board is needed for. So, <coughs> uh, and and uh, conversations and discussions that uh, remuneration committee is setting salaries for themselves that's already a uh, no stumbling block that slows down the whole uh, the whole process uh, and speaking about other countries about european supervisory boards that could be a lengthy discussion of you know the structure composition who's doing what but in, in, in ukraine the situation is different we're mostly talking about uh, soes with the only shareholder which is the state and the main function of the supervisory boards is uh, to ensure integrity it's not about management it's not about controlling functions uh, so <coughs> I think it's uh, quite counterproductive would be counterproductive in Ukraine to let remuneration committees to set the compensation because that, that would be politically <clears throat> sensitive and that's and that's why we have the regulations on that uh, to protect the officials from you know such accusations because with such regulations in place they can always say well I didn't do it it's in the law so for me it's a story that uh, I don't see how to sell Thank you for your frank answer. Well, colleagues, uh, um, well, there are, there are questions from our audience regarding the COVID situation and the lockdown. Well, indeed, there are many different ideas and uh, how the compensation should uh, change uh, uh, for management and um, board directors because of the events. Uh, on the on the one hand, uh, the responsibility for uh, making decisions is, is uh, increasing, and uh, the workload is increasing. Uh, on the other hand. Uh, the public at large uh, <coughs> actually can claim that uh, the performance, the results are getting worse and the salaries are staying the same. Uh, so what's the common approach, what's the practice, uh, who wants to be the first? <laughs> I would like to be the most provocative and uh, the most concrete on this. I'll start with myself. Um, so I had this specific situation before the lockdown. So uh, we won the arbitration in Stockholm, received 2.9 billion US dollars and uh, signed a new contracts with the guaranteed um, income of 7.2 revenue 7.2 billion um, <coughs> uh, 
they did not pay me the bonus that uh, was guaranteed in the contract. It was said in the contract that uh, if the company wins and uh, gets the money, uh, I will get the money. But then the supervisory board, for some reason, decided that despite there being such a clause in my contract, so the bonus will not be paid without the approval of the supervisory board. And um, they told me that, well, yes, we understand that uh, it's uh, money well, well earned, uh, but on the other hand, you know, that's difficult situation. The government pushed that right. Uh, well, it's not my schadenfreude, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, in fact, uh, what you can uh, say, you know, to such people that, uh, you know, if uh, you want the government to go against the law and not to pay the salaries that it uh, uh, promised to pay, then you you can be next, you know. The government will then just go on and tell you that uh, we cannot pay you the salary that you have in your contract. Uh, back in February or January, when the government of reformers with Goncharuk and Milovanov, you know, were <coughs> actually saying, that let's, not, let's not pay bonuses, let's uh, think it through because uh, it's a difficult situation. So, you know, don't ask for whom the bell tolls, you know, because tolls for you. Uh, so, uh, uh, people who were actually, you know, willing to please the government, they are now in this situation, you know, uh, because the government uh, is now uh, entitled to the point that they can say, well, you know, <clears throat> From now on, you'll be working for free or for some, you know, petty money. So that's that's my sudden Friday approach to the situation. So well, I'll just explain what the situation is. What what how it should it be? Uh, no. Uh, the way it should be, uh, the uh, supervisory boards where they really passionate and responsible, uh, right after this announcement or decision, they should, you know, said with one voice that that's risk, you know, uh, that's a risk for corporate governance, uh, because we're pillars of corporate governance. Uh, and uh, we'll uh, <clears throat> be resigning, we'll be suing you, but we are not going to agree with it. Uh, but uh, in reality, no one, to my knowledge, has sued the government. No one has said that uh, this decision creates such corruption risk that uh, they have no other choice than to resign. And that uh, supports yeah. my statement that most supervisory also, boards are, are if just... I can, if I can say here... Uh, sorry. There is a showcase, you know, as a screen. I think uh, supervisory boards, like any other uh, body in, in, in the country, has to and had to share the pain of uh, COVID and, and show solidarity uh, with the people who are suffering. Uh, the, the key issue here was the measure, the, the balance amount and the credibility of, of uh, this 
pain sharing and, and solidarity uh, process. I think nobody would have complained and nor, nobody did, as uh, Yuri said, when it was originally announced as a temporary measure for two or three months. Uh, and, and that was perfectly fine. But when it clearly uh, is transformed itself into a, an attack uh, or undermining, maybe for lack of a better term, of the corporate governance reform, it's an entirely different story because the practice now or the, the consequences over the last six months, seven months, is that some people are already leaving management boards and, and even supervisory boards. So this is, this is where the problem lies, that uh, this good practice of solidarity and pain, pain sharing has actually been overtaken by a political uh, agenda to uh, force out the supervisory boards and good governance and management boards uh, equally importantly from uh, professional parameters to a much more vulnerable environment of having to survive on minimal salary. Let's be honest about it. No professional in Kiev uh, can live on the kind of salary, especially if they're bringing expatriates in with families and children and everything else on, on that kind of salary. So this is, this is the fundamental uh, issue here. It would have been right if it was for a limited reasonable period of time. It's not right now because it has gone too far and too long. Yeah, it, it, to add, I, I think it's, it's more than just uh, the duration. Uh, it, I think it, it, it goes to what Yuri was saying in terms of the voluntary nature. Uh, and, and there were employment contracts that were, that were signed. Uh, and by superimposing on that a, a law, uh, that, that raises fundamental questions um, and uh, sets a precedent in, in terms of how are we going forward going to be able to continue to attract the right candidates uh, to these critical state-owned enterprises, both at the management level and at the supervisory board level. And, and already, the, I mean, we're seeing it that at the nomination committee, uh, the impact uh, in terms of the amount of, of interested candidates. Uh, so this is an issue going forward, but, but it's also an issue, as, as Shefki mentioned, uh, at, at the supervisory boards of state-owned banks and state-owned enterprises, that uh, uh, there are now fundamental risks in the governance uh, of these critical uh, institutions, the banking sector of the country, uh, where you have four critical state-owned banks, and strategically important state-owned enterprises, which, which poses a systemic risk to the macroeconomic stability of the country. Uh, so this is a dangerous precedent, uh, and the way it in which it was done uh, does uh, raise a, a number of questions and poses risk both in the present and in our success of promoting the reform going forward. And the fact that this is on IMF, uh, conditionality, uh, the fact that this is on the conditionality of many of assistance that the uh, European Union or IFIs are uh, considering for Ukraine uh, as supporters, as uh, stakeholders of, of Ukraine, but from a totally independent perspective, highlights to you to what stage this issue has uh, risen to, to what a big problem it has become in, this, in the context of Jason's statement. Перепрошую. Якщо можна, я додам. Я, е, мені е, відносно легко в цій Sorry. ситуації висловити. Well, I would like to add something that um, it's relatively easy for me to speak um, after Yuri's uh, uh, contribution. Uh, I've never that uh, uh, that I believe the bonuses should have been paid and uh, and uh, I supported the 
compensation cap. Uh, I'll refer to two articles, and one is available at uh, Interfax. And the idea is very simple. First, it's uh, the way it was done, what Jason said, and it was said uh, in the middle of the month, not the end even, that uh, you're not going to get the money. And uh, <coughs> until the lockdown is over for three months initially, and in one of those articles there, there is a calculation of uh, how much the state can save by uh, cap in the uh, salaries and um, we continued the calculation and that's saving of about 53 copex per each Ukrainian uh, so if we take all SOBs OEs, so that that would be the saving um, 53 copex per citizens in terms of the risks and Shevki and others mentions um, the losses in 2014 were about 350 to 400 a month so um, with that math uh, after three months of the lockdown we can say one uh, half uh, Grievous per citizens and lose uh, about 1500. So we're saving on the supervisory boards and uh, losing on performance. Uh, but uh, despite that, the official argument was that well, the idea to um, cap the salaries was to save money and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, maybe the the other points or or the other goal was to make some people resign. I disagree with what you said that uh, people should have resigned. Well, that was to a uh, <coughs> to some extent that was one of the of the goals and. Um, so what has the state achieved as a result of all this today? Um, the official argument uh, that it's for the sake of, uh, you know, money saving doesn't hold water. Potential long-term loss that can be incurred by the banks, so ease and the economy large is, is potentially very large. The <clears throat> in terms of uh, public opinion, uh, Max uh, said a while ago that despite you know the level of the salaries, it's like one hundred thousand or or one and a half million grievances. That's already too much for an average. Ukrainian and then 47k they believe that that's adequate for most people well on, on the question of solidarity well it depends on uh, you know you can show solidarity as members of uh, the board by doing this voluntarily and, and saying you know yeah. Standing up and saying we would like to cap our own salaries, but uh, but here that's absolutely the, the absolutely. I meant it, it needed to be it needed to be voluntary, of course, <laughs> that you cannot impose this on civil law contracts. That was and that is wrong. I meant it that the, the supervisory board members uh, were ready to show solidarity, and nobody uh, would have flinched from you know taking. Uh, zero pay even for a couple of months uh, to, to show that. Well, no one, no one actually needed, you know, any, any voluntary acts 
the authorities were not looking for that. <clears throat> well, in, in my case, uh, I said that uh, I will give up all my all my bonus, you know, and all, all, all the money that my team has made should be given up as charity, you know, to people. Uh, for example, you know, if a supervisory board uh, had, uh, you know, come up and uh, said that uh, we're giving up our compensation uh, on a voluntary basis, but that's not what the authorities wanted. They, they wanted to actually make a statement, you know, uh, to show the public that uh, that's what we're doing. Uh, so they wanted to be perceived as the party that's initiated it. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and what I said about, uh, you know, Solidarity and uh, what supervisory boards uh, didn't do right. That uh, they they should have they should have responded somehow to this uh, <coughs> decision. So if you are not uh, making any statements, if you are not suing the authorities, uh, it means that. Uh, uh, you are okay, you're, you can tolerate this and that, you know, the government is just making the point for the public and you are tolerating it. Як би ви це прокоментували? Я, я прокоментую це так, що проблема набагато ширша, ніж наглядові ради, тому що ці обмеження, вони були застосовані і до керівників компаній, і вони були застосовані до сотень тисяч державних службовців. І я буду абсолютно відвертим, що для багатьох з них це набагато критичніша ситуація, ніж для членів наглядових рад. І е, серед них є десятки тисяч людей, які не можуть кілька місяців працювати за нуль. Це фізично неможлива для них ситуація, тому що їм фізично не буде за що купувати е, їжу своїм дітям. Е, і е, таким чином е, був... Tens of thousands of uh, people who uh, does not have sufficient money now to sustain their living and to buy food for their children uh, so there are a lot of people who came to SOEs and to public authorities who well you know for those who never relied on, 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 on these salaries they they, they haven't noticed even uh, in, in customs, for example, you know, there are people that like uh, work uh, up there at the customs and then they lock the door and uh, go to and to their <coughs> plants and trees, etc. But then uh, there are also other people, people who believed in the public service they came to the system and they had certain expectations so that was a huge blow for them and uh, i know a lot of people who are now <laughs> resigning from public bodies because of this so i think uh, the politicians derived the best they could from this situation, you know, like in the uh, 
people servant uh, TV show. So they uh, <coughs> made a huge uh, statement, uh, but uh, this significant increase of corruption risk and this uh, damage to corporate governance, on the other hand, uh, is not so well seen is not so tangible for people, for the general public at least. Uh, and in terms of lifting the caps, I think that's going to be a long and, uh, uh, and gradual story. And, uh, this uh, decision to lift it for SOBs, that's like a Foreign courts, you know, the IMF and IFIs uh, would say, well, look, the financial part is okay, and the others, well, that's sad, but what can we say? But, <laughs> but again, my point is that uh, this problem is much wider than uh, just uh, supervisory boards, because for some categories, some other categories, the ramifications are, are much. Uh, worse than for for directors so uh, it's a uh, one would have expected some you know some reaction uh, some uh, loud uh, resignations but uh, to my knowledge there's been only once on IT <coughs> director uh, who resigned and uh, went to Alpha Bank. But uh, had that been more m massive, that that would have somehow, you know, pushed this discussion into the right direction. Uh, but now they're kind of discussing to cancel this uh, <coughs> In a, in a less uh, visible way, but that that's that yeah well that's indeed a, a bad precedent is created and they might do this again. Andrei, <laughs> seemed to me that you wanted to say something. Well, of course, I can add something anytime, but I just don't want to. Uh, there's a question from Olana. Alana Gordienko is uh, asking, and uh, I have great respect for Olana, and uh, we did together the corporate governance project in Naftagas, uh, and the Boitsun was our scientific academic supervisor, and Alana was in Baker McKenzie at the time, and uh, We've worked together since then and uh, treated each other <coughs> as professionals. Uh, uh, the question uh, from Olana is that why do you believe that supervisory board are not doing anything, are not reacting to this 47k cap? Well, that's based on my knowledge. Uh, I am not seeing anything in the media or elsewhere. Maybe there are some behind the scenes attempts to react or to change this somehow. So at least in my case, uh, when I reacted to that decision, uh, that was there was wide coverage, and uh, I provided my position to the media, to newspapers. So there was a lot of coverage and. Uh, no, because I did not see any any coverage, any reaction in the mass media. Uh, it seems to me that supervisory boards did not do anything, or they are not doing anything. Well, that's. Uh, uh, but that was just a figure of speech. What I meant to say is that uh, uh, there are no visible attempts, or at least attempts, to the extent that you know that could somehow influenced or, or push other people to make some decisions. Maybe that's happening somewhere, but I just, I just don't see it. 
Thank you, Yuri. Uh, we have uh, three to five minutes still to give floor to uh, board directors that uh, are with us and to Alana, maybe. Uh, and uh, also from the MGU, uh, and she wanted to say four words. Possible, Karina. Uh, yes. Hi, Karina. Hello, everybody. Sorry, I will just speak in English because uh, remuneration subject is something that I have a lot of experience of. Uh, in my career with advisory firms internationally. So I will be bringing up my international experience on this matter. And a few things I wanted to mention for your information so that um, Ukraine can learn from these examples of other countries. And I think this is remuneration of supervisory boards of state enterprises. It's not something that should be kind of people should be reinventing bicycle because it is public information. A lot of countries have sovereign wealth funds, sovereign holding companies. There is international forum of sovereign wealth funds. And this is where we can learn uh, from Malaysia's, from Mubadla's, from Kazana's, from kind of some roots. And there are a lot of examples out there and Karban shouldn't be thinking about this. In terms of specific numbers of remuneration of supervisory board, and I just want to build on the point that Shevke made before, is the reputational predictability of Ukraine for candidates like myself or people who come from professional backgrounds kind of all over the world. The price of my reputation is very important for me. And therefore, when I'm selecting between, say, Equinor that pays 100K a year for supervisory board member, and Samruk Kazuna, for example, they have Kazmuna Gas Company that pays 300,000 a year. Uh, this is the difference of reputational predictability of those positions. Yeah, and the challenge for supervisory board members in dealing with those issues. Um, on uh, the, uh, and kind of also just to say, the remuneration report of state companies, of many state companies, it's public information. So for every, so kind of uh, gas TSO, every European country has one. A lot of them publish remuneration reports for their supervisory boards or for their management boards which include independent directors because it's single tier board structures, which um, actually I prefer a lot more than supervisory board structures. And this information is publicly available and you can see what key performance indicators for those individuals I applied who are independent directors. And independent directors typically on KPIs of those, there are no performance indicators that relate to company performance. Majority of the KPIs for independent directors relate to meeting attendance and to contribution to the board. And check every single remuneration report of, kind of uh, listed companies, etc. And this is where Chef you mentioned conflict of interest point uh, to you earlier uh, about having variable um, aspect of pay. So, and uh, the final point that I wanted to make, it's about government representatives of supervisory board. I understand executive directors being part of boards, and I understand independent directors being uh, part of boards and being in kind of audit committees or remuneration committees. What I don't understand is um, role of government representatives and which governments they represent or who in government they represent or which interests in government they represent. So for me, this is a little bit kind of anomaly. But um, this is the kind of points that I wanted to make uh, for you today. Ah, the final point I wanted to make on the constitutional court decision and the point that Yuri made about supervisory boards not doing enough um, on stressing this uh, issue of remuneration. So for me, it's a constitutional court decision. And given the constitutional court uh, ruled on inconstitutionality, of one point of uh, the uh, budget law, and I, you're probably aware what has been in that decision. Um, I, I think the, the whole kind of law is basically it's constitutional. So this is the point that needs to be made. A different point is how to bring constitutional court case. There were several letters from supervisory board members to uh, prime minister, it's president, clearly they haven't done their job yet. So that's the kind of all points that I wanted to bring today.
Дякую, Каріна. Дякую, Каріна. Дякую, Каріна. Yes, Yuri. In fact, we uh, also know Olana Gordienka, and uh, we normally give her the opportunity to speak. She is she is connected. So yes, I am here. <laughs> so hi, everyone. I'm proud Ukrainian. <laughs> so I suggest since uh, we know each other, we can discuss the details uh, between ourselves. Just a couple of words. Uh, as a chairperson of uh, Ukarapsim's board, how many times during the last five or six months I've submitted a uh, is writing statements and complaints. I'm not even gonna uh, say that, mention that many times. And uh, yes, <laughs> uh, what Andre said, uh, the goal of the CAPS was uh, like that. Uh, would it be good for Ukraine if we just all, all leave or, or start to, you know, doing nothing uh, uh, so uh, actually <clears throat> if we come up with an ultimatum saying that uh, you either leave the caps or we leave uh, we all know how it works and it's not well it wouldn't be a constructive reaction In, in, in fact, uh, uh, the biggest concern of uh, our supervisory board and our bank, and as I understand, in other banks, SOBs as well, was not the issue of compensation. Well, well yeah, that's, a, that's an issue in itself, can be discussed, um, 47K or something else, what we actually do, etc. <laughs> But then, in terms of uh, supervising and uh, overseeing the management, uh, for doing complex and professional job, uh, and and also because uh, uh, it's not clear what the what the what the period will be. Uh, as Shevke said, if it's like for two or three months, then then could be fine. And uh, we also sent our money to charities and uh, buying <coughs> medical stuff, etc. So the, uh, no. In the banking sector, there is a market for the executives and everyone knows what uh, their value is, what their compensation should be. So that, that was the... And, and this institution should be managed professionally. So that was, that, that was our concern. So... Uh, uh, I think uh, this conference is very interesting. Thank you, Alexander. And uh, we'll understand in a couple of months even more why this is interesting. And uh, it would be great to have someone actually even more provocative than Yuri to represent the other side. And, uh, you know, that there was this discussion with Pablo whether the corporate governance reform is actually making progress or whether it's completed or it has to be destroyed. So that, that could also be very interesting. Thank you for your attention. I don't want to 
take any more of your time. Thank you very much, Alana, for your contribution, for your kind words. And so, uh, yes, regarding uh, further events, uh, yes, we are considering that and uh, we're seeing interest from the public and uh, yes, Dear speakers, thank you for your time, for your uh, expert contributions, for your participation in the discussions. Special thanks to Yuri for your provocative way of uh, saying things. I believe that was on purpose and uh, it did work. Uh, uh, thank you. Very, very good. So, Jason Shevki, thanks for finding the time despite the time difference and uh, thank you all who have been watching us and uh, who care about the issues thank you until um, our next meeting thank you